The Alabama ball game starts in 25 minutes. Do I have time to get nachos made so I can sit down and eat those before the game? Let's see. I've got to decide which one of these I'm going to use. And I'm going to get going. Kim Tesla here. I'm going to show you how I make my special nachos. It's easy as it can be, and I've got 25 minutes before the ball game comes on, so let's get to it. These are some of the possible components. Of course, you have to have chips. I'm going to use the Tostito Scoops because they hold more stuff. I got the ground chuck because it was $2.99 a pound. It was actually cheaper for me to buy some extra, so I will go ahead and cook it and put it in the freezer. But I'm only going to use about a pound of this. I'm using uh, El Paso Taco Seasoning Mix. I'm using hot and spicy because I want it hot and spicy. You can use the regular or the mild if you like. I'm going to use a one pound block of Velveeta cheese. And I picked up two of these because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, the original Rotel or the Fire Roasted. And I'm, since I got the hot and spicy taco seasoning mix, I'm going to go with the original Rotel base. Cook that, add the taco seasoning mix in, mix those together, melt them, and then that's your base. And then you can put anything you want to on the topping. You can put sour cream on top or you can actually use plain Greek yogurt. It's going to give you more protein per calories. And I'm just going to put some jalapeno peppers on mine. You can put guacamole, salsa, extra cheese, tomatoes, um, lettuce, you know, all that stuff you want on it. But I'm just not that fancy on the top. About a pound of hamburger meat. Um, since I'm cooking a bunch, I'm going to cook it in the electric skillet. Cook it on medium heat, which is going to be 350. Just get it as brown as you want it to be. While the meat's cooking, I'm going to do this in the microwave. I did wash the top of the hotel can. And I did end up using the fire roasted because I opened it by mistake, so we'll see. Should be good, right? I should have checked. So the fire roasted has dark pieces of fire roasted pepper in it. And cut it in hunks. This stuff feels gross, I'm not going to lie. I have my meat brown enough. This is the beauty of buying low fat meat is I don't have to drain the grease off of this. If you want to, you can stop and do that. Or you can take a paper towel and blot it out if you like. I'm going to unplug it. Get my whole pack of taco seasoning mix in here. And to make this a sauce, you're supposed to add some water. So I just usually put some water in because there's still product in there. About halfway through the package. Pour it on and then let it simmer for about five minutes. It smells great. And that turns it into a little saucy top thing. Gives it some good flavor. If you don't like buying the taco seasoning mix, you can. Make your own mix at home, which is just chili, some other spices and stuff. This is just hitting the easy button. Put it on low heat, on simmer. And warm. I'm going to put the top back on it. I'll heat up my cheese. Got the Velveeta and the Rotel in the microwave. Microwave for one minute on high. Arrange my nachos while it's microwaving. I like this, I should send my tostitos, shouldn't I? I'm hungry in mine. So in these, on the scoops, turn the business side up. Like 
microwave another minute. Probably could microwave it one more minute. But things still cook after they've been out of the microwave for a little bit longer. So I think I'm going to go with it. So now I can just spin it out of this bowl, and then whatever's left over can just stay in this bowl to be reheated up in this. So I don't have to deal with the whole saucepan in a separate container. Let's put this thing together. Put my meat on here. Spoon my cheese. Making a little bit of a mess, but I'm in a hurry. And I opted for the sour cream, so I'm going to dollop some of that on here. And put some peppers on. And I am good to go. I think I could have made it a little bit more attractive if I was using two hands. Yay! Thanks so much for my video about my special nachos. They're easy to make. They're fast. They're good. So I'm going to go eat them and enjoy the Alabama game. Remember, it's free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share this video if appropriate, and until next time, take care. Bye. Just in time. They're even good the next day for leftovers. Yum. This is with uh, Greek yogurt on there, and you can see it looks almost exactly the same. Does that not look great? Now let's try this Rotel del Nacho, a little bit more from scratch. I'm going to use my Tostito scoops, a 10 ounce can of the Rotel, one pound of Mexican cheese. I'm going to use the same container to microwave it in. Now I've already cooked my ground beef. I'm going to thaw that out in the microwave. And I don't have taco seasoning mix, so I'm going to make it with chili powder, some garlic powder, some cayenne pepper, and a little bit of salt. I'm going to top it with either sour cream or Greek, plain Greek yogurt, whichever one I want, and put the jalapeno peppers on there just like I did before. So let's see if this works. Wash the top of the cans, or wipe it off really, really well down in the ridge, not just in the center point. You want to get it down in here where you're going to put the can opener. Going to thaw my frozen ground chuck that's already cooked, about three minutes. I put the whole 16 ounces, one pound of cheese in here. I'm going to pour the 10 ounce can of Rotel in here. Don't drain it. This is the regular Rotel. The fire roasted was good. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. I'm going to microwave it for a couple minutes. My ground chuck has defrosted. Frosted ground chuck in there, and I don't care about draining the fat. Let's so mix up the taco seasoning mix. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of the chili powder in here, and eh, maybe two. I'm going to put a little bit of cayenne pepper in there, a little bit of salt. 
and a little bit of garlic powder. Mix that up. Sprinkle it on my meat. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, make a sauce. About a, about a fourth of a cup of water. Put it on medium heat. Let it simmer while I stir the cheese and the vodka. That's after two minutes. I'm going to stir it up. The pan's going to get hot. So the next time I pull it out, I'm going to have to have a hot pad. Two more minutes. This is after two more minutes. The difference in the regular cheese, the Velveeta is going to be a lot creamier because it has ingredients in it that just regular cheese doesn't have in it. So the consistency is going to be a little different. The flavor is going to be a little bit better on the regular cheese for me. So I'm going to do it one more minute. I'm cutting my meat up to medium high just for a minute to get it simmering. And now I'm going to cut it, cut it off because we're about to assemble this stuff. I actually didn't put all the meat in there. I thought I just had enough on this particular one. I'm going to stir the queso up one more time. See, it works just fine. Spoon it on here. You can see it's thicker and it's going to cool off really fast because it doesn't have that cheese product stuff in it. So we don't like this part of it. Just know it's going to be prettier and creamier using the Velveeta. But I wanted to try it this way. Let's see what it would do. I'm going to top it with my sour cream, my peppers, and enjoy. So that's just a different way you can do it if you're opposed to using Velveeta. Thanks for watching. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm, yummy.